So I just downloaded iOS 7 and uh, I want to show you some cool things that you might not know uh, that, it, that iOS 7 does. So check out this video and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you learned one thing, give me a thumbs up because it would have been worth it for me to provide this video to you. So check it out and let me know what you think in the comments. See ya! You used to be able to push a button, you know, push your home button one time and it would take you to the spotlight search. Well, that's no longer an option. And what you do is just swipe down on your page and then you'll get to the search. And you can search your apps and your mail and stuff there. And that works on any page. So you don't have to be on just the main page. So yeah, you can just swipe down and you see search pops up. So that's how you search now on iOS 7. Another thing I want to show you is uh, the Compass app now includes a bubble level, so uh, you don't have to go buy a bubble level on the App Store. It has one built in, and let me show you that. So I'm going to double click because I already have it open, and there it is here. So here's my Compass. I have the Compass open, and to calibrate, it's saying rotate around like so. So I've calibrated, so there's my compass app. And notice if you swipe over, you get this little app here. So you see these two uh, white circles. If you set it on something level, they line up and it turns green. If it's not level, it shows you how off it is. So there you go. So my countertop here is level. So that's just a cool little unadvertised thing that is now included. Um, that's your in your Compass app. Another thing I think comes in really handy if you open your messages and uh, just choose some messages here. If you swipe to the left you'll get a timestamp for each time that that message was either sent or read. You know before you didn't. Before you just got a general you know, Tuesday 6-12 is what that says there. It doesn't really give you a, a time for each particular app. But if you pull over to the side, you can see my camera's not the greatest, but you can see little timestamps there next to each little message. And uh, so that way you can see when uh, each one was received and sent. So that's another cool little hidden feature in the messages. Okay, another little... Uh, thing that's kind of cool and I think they should have added it a long time ago so you can see I have a ton of folders have a bunch of games before there was a limit you could only put um, I forget how many 12 apps per folder well now there's no limit so like I have three two folders here that are sports games because I just I had too many that would you know fill up one folder so now I can move all those into one app or one folder and uh, kind of clean up my numerous uh, screens here so yeah the unlimited apps can go in a folder now so that's cool okay another cool feature that's in the camera if you load your camera as you can see you now swipe to go through the different modes so now I'm in video back to photo uh, there's a square photo for like Instagram and those apps. Um, then panoramic mode. So you swipe uh, between the different uh, camera types. But uh, one thing that's cool is if you hold down the button, it just takes picture after picture after picture. So, I mean, if you're at a sporting event, as you can see, all those pictures it just took. So yeah, if you're at a at a sporting event, you just hold down your button and it just fires them off one right after another. Okay, another thing that's kind of cool, if you're a big Twitter user, um, open up Safari. You can browse the internet. Get Click on your bookmarks icon, which is down at the bottom here. And if you see there, there's a little at symbol. If you click that little at symbol, it shows you links that um, 
people you follow on Twitter have shared. So that's a cool way of keeping up with your Twitter feed and these are internet links that your Twitter, your people you follow have shared and uh, you click on one and it takes you right to that link that's in that Twitter uh, post. For example, I'll just click on one here. This is CNN breaking news uh, about a lottery ticket. And if you click on it, it takes you directly to that article about the winning Powerball ticket. So there it is. So that's cool and kind of hidden and hasn't been really advertised much. So if you're a big Twitter user, I can see you using that quite a bit. Okay, another thing I've noticed is Siri is somewhat improved. Um, she now displays web data within Siri instead of just providing you with external links to go click on. Um, for example, what does the fox say? Here is what I found. So as you can see, it pulled up a article on Megan Fox. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's real accurate. So I guess it tells me what she says. Uh, let's try again. Show me a picture of an armadillo. Okay, I found this on the web. So as you can see, there's some pictures provided by Bing. But yeah, before it would give you an external link, but now they display the results within Siri. So that's kind of neat. Okay, another thing is um, if you open settings, and I'm sorry my camera's not as not great to get zoomed in, but if you go to privacy, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a word advertising. If you click on that, there's a limit ad tracking, and you want to turn that on. Um, what that is, is Apple anonymously collects your browsing uh, history, your patterns, and what you're looking at. So it knows what you're interested in, and it provides advertisements related to your searches. So if you don't want Apple to know, to keep... Uh, tabs on what you're doing and tracking your browsing data um, and patterns and history then go under privacy and under advertising and turn that on. There's also a new feature called background app refresh so these are apps that are running in the background that maybe you have opened and you're just not currently in you can allow those to update so next time you um, go into it, it'll have uh, current fresh data. For example, if you had Twitter open and you know you have it running in the background and you want it to continue to update with you know new tweets and stuff, you can uh, it'll you can set it to automatically update. So go under settings, go to general, go to background app refresh, and then that will you can choose which apps you want to uh, refresh their content um, when you're not using them. So you can set Twitter to constantly refresh and that way uh, when you go into it it'll be as if you never left and it'll be up to date. But you probably want to limit on what is allowed to update just due to battery life and uh, I guess what, what you're cap on data usage is so you might want to be careful with that there you have it I hope you learned at least one thing in this video and if you did share it on Facebook share it on Twitter wherever Google Plus so uh, other people can hopefully learn at least one thing from this video thanks see ya